What's up everybody, it's Kyoto, and welcome to another Dragon Project video. Today we'll be doing a Soul Sword and Claw guide, so let me break it down to what I'll be going over today. So first off, we'll be going over the Soul Sword and Claw's weapon skills, Demon Hold, and Demon Strike. And then I'll be giving an explanation of when to use them. Then after that, I'll have some general maneuvers and positioning. And um, I'll give a little bit of my personal playstyle on how I use the Soul Sword and Claw. And then we'll go on to Magi pairings to help make your set a little bit stronger. So first up, we'll be going over Demon's Hold and Demon Strike. Demon's Hold combos into Demon Strike. This is going to be your main attack rotation for the Soul Sword and Claw. Both skills fill the Soul Gauge, and when the Soul Gauge is active, it additionally builds fatigue on the target. Alternating between these skills will charge your Magi gauges very fast, so you can cast your Magi more often than other weapon types can. Demon's Hold is kind of like a claw shot. You can tap and hold to throw out a claw, and it will auto-target onto the enemy. Release to pull yourself towards the target. You can hold it for as long as you want. Using Demon's Hold on a fatigue target lengthens the fatigue duration, which is perfect for those who like the support roll. You can roll while using Demon's Hold to cancel it in case you don't want to launch yourself into death. So, now we move on to an explanation of when to use them. After pulling yourself in with Demon's Hold, you can swipe in any direction to perform a demon strike. Tapping instead of swiping does the same thing as swiping up, so just for clarification, I'll refer to it as tap swiping. There are three types of demon strikes. Each type has a different amount of invulnerability frames, and I'll explain them from shortest to longest. First up we have the side swipe. You can swipe left or right and your character will side spin in that direction. The side spin slashes twice and hits low to the ground. This swipe has the least invulnerability frames, but also comes with the shortest end animation, making it the fastest method for building fatigue or the soul gauge. Tapping or swiping up makes the user jump up and slash down, dealing a single hit at medium height, so this is a great option for staying in one place or hitting targets above your normal hitbox. Lastly, swiping down has the longest end animation, which makes the user jump back with a retreating upward slash hitting at about waist level. You can also queue a roll to activate as soon as the end animation finishes to maximize your invulnerability frames. You just swipe in any direction while mid-jump. Moving on to general maneuvers and positioning. While alternating between Demon's Hold and Demon's Strike, swipe sideways to position your character outside of the target's attack range, then tap swipe when you're in a good spot. Swipe backwards when you think you're in a tough spot and queue a roll if you need to. So here's a little bit of my personal playstyle. I will use Demon's Hold and Demon Strike as the main attack rotation still, but the Soul Gauge and Fatigue Charge take priority over positioning. This is a dangerous, squishy rogue type of playstyle that punishes you for not knowing Behemoth mechanics, so I don't recommend it for beginners. If you're not a beginner or you want to learn it anyway, here's how it goes. Alternate between Demon's Hold and Demon Strike, but only use side swipes until two conditions are met. One, the Soul Gauge is currently active and two, the behemoth is fatigued. Once these conditions are met, there are two things you can do depending on your team. If your team has a normal or heat greatsword user, tap and hold demon's hold to lengthen fatigue duration until the greatsword user lands their cleave. When the greatsword user isn't very effective against your target, switch the following tactic. If your team doesn't have a normal or heat greatsword user, switch your side swipes to tap swiping for more DPS. One thing you'll notice is that I don't have an attack magi in rotation, and that's because I focus on building the soul gauge instead of dishing out magi damage. By continuously alternating between demon's hold and demon strike throughout the entire fight, my soul gauge stays active for multiple fatigues in a row, since the soul gauge is constantly charging. Alright, moving on to magi pairings. Since most attacks can be dodged with soul sword and claws and innate dodging abilities, building mostly for damage or soul gauge rate is highly recommended. It's always good to have some health and defense passive magi for survivability, so don't forget to have those prepared in case you need it. Building for damage helps your DPS, while building for soul gauge rate helps your DPS and fatigue rate. The cool thing about this weapon type is that it doesn't rely on attack magi because most of the time your focus is on building the soul gauge. But if you're looking to dish out some extra damage, find yourself a strong one-hit attack magi so you can blast a target during fatigue and lessen the chance of breaking apart during cast just in case you're facing a behemoth with magi counter. A lot of recovery magi options are viable for this weapon type, so you can pick and choose based on the situation, but as far as support magi goes, 
I think this is the most important slot on a Soul Sword and Claw, maybe even on all weapon types. My personal choice is to pair my sets with a damage buffing support magi like Cloak or Fury since the magi gauge fills fast enough to maintain an infinite buff. If you need survivability, then you could always go with an Aegis magi. Well that's it for this Soul Sword and Claw weapon guide. This has been Kyoto, I hope you liked it, let me know what you think about it in the comment section below and I will be doing more weapon guides in the future so be sure to check them out, like, subscribe, ding that bell so that you know when the videos come out. I'll see you all later.